It's October the 5th, 2015. I'm Dana Durnford, also known as the nuclear proctologist.org. And you can find my videos and Fukushima presentations in these episodes at Beautiful Girl by Dana on YouTube and many other sites out there. And so we stream live at 10 a.m. Pacific Canada time from British Columbia, Canada. So if you're trying to match up your time uh, and the timer on your countdown, the preamble to these shows is synced to the time on your computer and so that's important so you can yeah, catch the stream nuclearproctologist.org and you can find my videos and Fukushima presentations <laughs> and these episodes and so we definitely stream in live and that's good and that's the monitor over there and let me just get back up to speed and I have to run this whole operation by myself I know yesterday that we had a problem with the audios of the earthquake uh, footage I was showing and the tsunami because I imported that earlier because I got a copyright the day before and I forgot to turn down the volume and so the first seven minutes of episode two are pretty muddled but then it's like it is right now where it's really clean really clear and hi everybody um, once again hang on a bit of distortion let that settle down I left the audio on my headphones that time, so you might have, might have got an echo through the whole show if I didn't turn it down. So it's okay to be delayed for a few minutes. Today we got a really important show. And we got a half an hour saying hi to everybody after questions and answers. And so stick to the topic of five and six and see if we can cover anything I didn't cover. And good luck on that because... Um, I'm going to load you up today with some really, really, and I'm going to be slurping a little bit today. I'm having a rough morning. I don't stop. And so the best thing to remember is that you had an earthquake. And that's uh, right behind reactor six in Japan. You had a tsunami. That's coming right in on the reactors in Japan. And I'll show you a video clip of it coming into the reactor, actually. Um, right away and, and it had detonations it's just you know that how can anything survive that right and so let's play a little short clip from Stanford University I think this was on the 15th of March and they showed the tsunami coming in and hitting the nuclear power plant uh, the first is Matthew Wald from the New York Times this is a short video that was taken by a plant employee on his cell phone we survived the earthquake, and it was the, the wave coming in. Tokyo Electric Power got out there. You see that spurt? That's the, the wave hitting the front of the building and spurting up into the air. And they looked at where the works were. And this was not designed for that. No plant was designed for that. Maybe it should have been designed for that, but it wasn't. Uh, the first is Matthew Wall. And so that came smashed into this... Uh, and that's the Fukushima Daiichi. Uh, there, there's many other power plants were hit by that same wave. And so you need to think about that. And so I'm going to play the clip again today of the wave in the background that I was playing yesterday and talk through that again one more time because it's very important that everybody's just learning these episodes actually hear what I got to say about that. Yesterday was a disaster. I'll be keeping my eye on the comments section in case there's... In case there's um, Fingers tripping, tipping, fingers tipping, tripping. Am I doing that? Okay. Hi, Kate. And you'll find Kate's links below uh, my videos. And so I'll be keeping an eye on the comment section for the next couple of moments. And Miss Milky, of course. Thank you, Jan. And Jan Brooks runs Miss Milky the Clown over there. So we'll say hi to everybody after. This is a tsunami coming into the coastline. And yesterday I had the audio turned way up, but I wanted to really break this down in context of, because people don't understand or haven't really looked at the footage or haven't put it into context or don't remember the, the details in context of what we're, uh, when they're talking about Fukushima and they don't they never bring that into the conversation. And it's hard to bring it into the conversation, but it's easy for me because I can... These images were taken from... And everything I'm going to talk about, and we got an amazing amount of pictures of after the damage to get through. So we're not going to waste any time. we got one hour. This is episode three. This is uh, building five and six. We're going to jump into that freight. 
And so this whole country, 500 miles of it, 500 miles, your, your fingers are, okay, uh, Kate, I got you. And I gotta, because I gotta realize, you gotta realize people are gonna be watching this over the next couple of years heavily and, and we want them to really visualize everything. That's what we accomplished and that's why we're doing what we're doing is in increments, the whole event from beginning all the way up to present is what we're gonna cover. And that's gonna take us a few months. And by that time, I'll have all these episodes up and I'll be on the road with the documentary and the book and I don't have to worry about the, the information getting disseminated as much as I am right now. And that's what I'm doing, what I'm doing is I'm, in case something does happen to me, we have we have the, that narrative now for everybody to be able to grasp onto. And that could be everywhere from them snatching me for sedition or just killing me outright uh, because we are the opposition. And we have every right to be. We're not asking anybody's permission. We're taking it. And that's how it's going to be. And with every generation that runs up against this, uh, it'll be more and more people all the time. So the tsunami took out the entire country. The entire coastline, every reactor has to suck up a million gallons a minute and is plugged up with that stuff. Thanks, Candace. We got the volume correct. I've done the same thing with the next one on the earthquake. It's just a short video. But it's so important to understand that, that what you're looking at ran through all the power plants on the coastline. The, all the power plants, the majority of them, and Japan is a small country. It's the same size, say, California, but it has 50-something nuclear power plants, 54, I think it was, and the majority of them are on the coastline. So the only ones that are starting up are the ones that are in land, because like I just showed you that footage, the ones on the coastline were wrecked, and there can be no doubt about what I just showed you. And so now you got that part worked out, and I'm looking for that earthquake. And we'll get jumped to that after. Let's run over to some headlines. We'll come back to the earthquake on units five and six. And we got so much. And at the same time, we got to bomb through the pictures. And at the same time, we got to... Um... Okay, here we go. So unit five and unit six. Now, you haven't heard much about that. And remember that tsunami ran through there, okay? So the number five cooling system stops, back up, not yet working. And a lot of these headlines are not going to be in proper order, unfortunately. May the 28th, 2011, though. Number one was melting 50 minutes after the cooling stopped. And number five cooling stopped and back up, not working. That was May the 28th. So, but what I'm going to show you coming up is Japan announced cooling systems restored. Number one and four, and the breakdown was a court. That was the day after that last headline. And I should have skipped ahead a couple of headlines before I jumped into it. Japan announces cooling system. Hang on. So, yeah, no, okay, I realize why I've done that. TEPCO waited for morning to work on a broken reactor because there was nothing to worry about. And that's the headlines we're going to show you. And so May the 29th, pump failure nearly brings number five to a boil. And um, oil spill at Fukushima near reactor five and six. Oil leak into the sea from the heavy tanks for, re for the reactors, five and six. Okay, so what you're seeing is, I'm showing you slowly right away, is the damage. Now, the explosion heard near heavily damaged number four reactor. Like I say in episode two, we believe that was the common spent fuel pool, and that had nine million pounds of used rods into it. It had 6,350 assemblies and 80 rods in each assembly, and each rod is 18 pounds. Let me keep going. We'll get to where I need to be. Cooling systems at reactor number five. So number five and six contained 8,000 tons of radioactive water will be transferred to Megafloat over the next few months. I'm not sure why they got mixed up. It's just well, You'll understand by the end of the show how much I had here. TEPCO uses radioactive water for reactor number five and six to spray throughout the Fukushima plant. Over 100 tons a day. So reactor number five and six contained 8,000 tons and their solution was to use it to spray on the other reactors. This is salt water and salt water 
There's a phenomenon known about the salt water is the sulfur in the salt water pre- creates these sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyballs and they're, they're superficial shapes like a soccer ball, you know, with these that architect. And so it ingests the atoms and becomes like a little nuclear engine with an extraordinary, unimaginable long uh, life and extremely, um, extremely mobile and is not salutable with water. Now they sprayed reactors on these, uh, water on these reactors on its own is bad enough, but contaminated water onto the fissionable products that were melting down, that's, um, that's, that's beyond insane. That, that's not an accident. They were told to do that, and the people who told them to do it knew what they were doing. Before, Fukushima reactors number five and six uh, in crisis. In crisis. Uh, locals say uh, the engineers are coming to help. So outside release points up to a thousand. See, you really don't need to see any more headlines than that one right there. That's October 24th, though. That's long after the accident. It's the same year. So reactor five and six in crisis, and we just done that one. CCM rises by reactors five and six discharge at the highest level in months. Now at that point, they're back on the site. At that point, they killed a lot of homeless. At and because that's you won't see it's not Harvard that's going in there, or Yale or Stanford. And I'll show you a prime example of what I mean by that. Is Harvard's I got no idea what I got done with that for sure, but just bear with me for one second. Okay, that's not the one I was looking for. We're coming back to that after, by the way. Here we go. Let me see if this here. Just really quick, I want to get it. Harvard refused to send artwork to Fukushima. You know why? Because they're anywhere in the prefecture, let alone go into the prefecture themselves. They wouldn't even send their artwork there. I don't know why I went through all that effort to bring that up, but I wasn't. I think that's important. And so, I'm just going to run through some pictures, though, very quick here. Not really quick, but um, and so these are Tepco's pictures. You can download these at uh, Tepco's website below my page. Just look for the ones marked Unit Five and the Unit Six at Tepco's website. There's a couple of thousand pictures right there you can download. You can find them. Those same pictures at the nuclear proctologist.org, and that's uh, we'll come at we'll touch this on this at the end of the show, but that's the website. And you can watch the videos of Beautiful Girl by Dana on YouTube. And you go to uh, videos below it, open up that dialect box and go to all streams. And I do the show 10 a.m. each morning, five days a week. And that doesn't mean I won't do something on the weekends, uh, but it does mean that um and so this is outside of Unit 5 and 6 on, on, hang on, this was on the seaside area of Unit 5 and Unit 6. So the tsunami came through here, and you can see what the earthquake done on the seaside of it. The earthquake picked the ground up, and look how high it raised it. So do you suppose, just maybe, oh, I don't know, possibility... That could have, this could have damaged the reactors. Because the tsunami was right off that coast. So let's play a little clip. And I'm here, I got the audio adjusted. And what you're going to see is the earth shifting back and forth, coming up here. See the earth shifting? That's in Tokyo. And Tokyo is a long way from Fukushima Prefecture, but and Fukushima Prefecture got much more motion than this. And the motion that you're looking at, as it's only a short one minute video, but the motion you're looking at, I gotta keep an eye over here to make sure I'm streaming live all the time and make sure nobody's yelling at me that something's wrong. Um, and still stream, and still handle the whole software. <laughs> it's just mad what I try to pull off every single day. So the liquefaction of the water coming up through the earth in Tokyo, is, is is showing you how much damage is going on. So the wave was, uh, the, the, the earthquake was a thousand times worse than Haiti. And it's picking the earth up. 
and, and it's like a blanket, like you're shaking a blanket for two minutes, trying to shake dog hairs off your blanket for two minutes, and you're shaking the daylights out of your blanket for two minutes. And imagine if there's a, um, a little tiny human clinging onto that blanket, he's one inch tall, and you're shaking that blanket for two minutes straight. Do you think he can cling onto that blanket? No. Do you think an insect would be able to cling onto that blanket for two minutes with all these legs and hooks in their feet and all the microscopic hair bonding with the material of the blanket and getting the best hold possible? No, he couldn't even stay on either. And so what you're seeing in, in the video behind me is that you know, all the way to Tokyo, the, the ground is being pounded. And there's enormous weights on this ground from these cities, these buildings, these roads, these poles, these... Imagine trying to pick up one of these telephone poles and putting it on your shoulder. Imagine trying to pick up a handful of those bricks and putting them in your hands and carrying them a mile up the road till you can't carry no more bricks in your arms and go a mile up the road with it. So there's a real weight there, is what I'm trying to say to you. And, but yet this earthquake is picking everything up and shaking it like a like a blanket, and then the tsunami had ran through the whole shoreline of the coastline where all the nuclear power plants. So total pandemonium and Armageddon, and, but it never ever stopped because the radioactive fallout is imminent. Now this earthquake, didn't, look at this, do you think for a second that that didn't cause damage to the integrity structure of the buildings? Also, do you think it just broke up the, the side of the roads? Right? Do you think it's just like the buildings are not affected? So, of course not, right? So, do you believe your eyes or do you believe what you're told? That's why I show you everything. That's why I'm providing everything for you. That's why I'm trying to give you every opportunity to understand what we're talking about is not... Because you can't have a conversation about radiation without sounding salacious or without sounding alarmist or without sounding... Uh, without sounding like a fear-mongering. But what I'm trying to do to you is I'm showing you the documentation and, and it's still going to come across that way. There's nothing I can do about it and it's pertinent on top of that. So the earthquake, this is right outside of number six reactor and look at it. So not only could it pick up the highways, it picked up those buildings no problem too. And it, you know you can look up a video on YouTube of 35 skyscrapers doing this. What do you think was happening right closer to the Epic Center? Well, it was wrecking everything, right? And so uh, uh, um, what I'm showing you is that an earthquake can take out your nuclear power plant. You can have a meltdown. It'll separate all the cooling pipes. It'll tear apart the infrastructure of the building. It'll tear the building right apart. No problem at all. Once it gets its own way, once it starts shaking the whole country. But when you bring in a tsunami and it wipes out all the infrastructure in the country at the same time, and then the industry, rather than come out and saying, okay, it was just too much. No, no, it's okay. We got it under control is what they done. And they didn't. And they never will. And they can't get into Chernobyl. But these are uh, out in front of five and six pictures after the tsunami. This is the Fukushima 50 running through. And so a lot of the pictures are blurred from radiation, low quality. And the Fukushima 50, there was hundreds of these people, but the original Fukushima 50 that ran through this place, now I'm not saying specifically how long after these pictures were taken, I can't remember. <coughs> I downloaded them from TEPCO's website, you can download them yourself below my video. And you can't believe anything TEPCO tells you, or the metadata that you might find in the picture. And TEPCO, TEPCO is not putting a link below their video because there are oh, shit, you know, I haven't got time to uh, redact that. You can check the two million emails below my my video and you'll see they redact it constantly every single page, okay? And so there's lots of stuff going on here. The pictures we're showing you is, this is what the tsunami and the earthquake had done to it. It just tore it apart. But no, no, the reactors are fine. But they blew up on top of that. No, no, they're fine. But every all the infrastructure in the entire country was gone and it got no water. No, no, they're fine. But what I show you is a starkly different story. What I give you is a completely different narrative and is going to just, it's going to assault your senses and, and it's going to really mess up your rhythms. Uh, but you have to get through that. You have to be strong and you have to understand that we're not doing this because we want to. We're doing this because we got no options because somebody had to go do it. We went and done it. It's done. We went and searched the coastline 
and we got the documentation. We're putting that up at the nuclear proctologist. Now, I've been off for a week on that site. I took four days off on everything because I just came off the ocean. But you can see the carnage. And so this story is not supposed to be about me. And so I'm trying to avoid that. And the same thing with the documentary. The documentary is not about me. And I'll be avoiding that. I can dramatize it with hurricanes that I blew up on the rocks 3.30 in the morning and flipping over little zodiacs and storms and struggles of life and death all day falling overboard by myself in the middle of nowhere and documentations of that. I can put all that into the documentary, I most likely won't because the documentary is not that struggle of me, it's that struggle of good versus evil and righteous uh, having some kind of future without, you know, and I can't really say without anything because what we're talking about, once again, you can't have a conversation about Fukushima without sounding um, you know, alarmist. It is alarmist. There's nothing I can do about it. That's not my choice that I sound alarmist. It, 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 everything about this is alarmist. So the whole site was smashed. This is out in front of five and six, all of these pictures. The whole site was cracked up and upheaved and wrecked, but oh no, Dana, the reactors are fine. I can't buy into that because I have to go look things up myself and check into it myself. And what I see doesn't match up to what you told me. And so that's why I exist, and that's why everybody else exists in those capacities, is because the lies don't match up with the documentation. And I know I'm supposed to just take people's words for it, like the average person, but that's not who I am. I'm not capable of that. This is what the tsunami done. Look at this. But the reactors are fine. I'm going to show you the reactors are not as strong as that tank, okay? Period. The torque that it takes to spin that tank and do that to it. Do you got any idea what it takes to do to a great big welded vessel like this? The pressure, the enormity of it. What that would do to your house or to any building, let alone to do it to a tank. A tank doesn't, and it's round. And like if you go to a bridge, the feet of it are usually round. Why? Because it's the most dynamic, yeah? But yet it suffered. It was ripped to pieces. But look at it. But the reactors are fine throughout the whole coastline, Dana. Yeah, we had typical employees, dear, with buckets. Stop the water from getting out of Dana. Uh, so everything got pounded out in front of the building, but the buildings are okay, Dana. Yeah? Just one big wreck. But everything's fine. Great big chunks of earth and cement and just holes and earth ripped apart and broken apart but i'm supposed to believe that there's no problem that no matter what headline i read about this releases it can't be true because reactors are indestructible dana well that's not true the experts don't say that but the nuclear apologists the media regurgitates it but does that mean it was true no we got no proof to show these reactors are any more likely to survive anything than anything else. We don't have the technology to even go in and find out on top of that. You know, it's we got 4,340 peer review academic studies every day, and if we were to flip that energy, but it's all locked away beyond the paywalls of Ellsworth, Springer, and Wally, but if we were to flip that, because they get the copyrights to all the universities throughout North America, 4.3 million a year or something, academic journals are published, not counting the ones that are not published. We're going to take all that manpower. We can solve all of these problems. We can't fix the damage. We can't stop the death of the Pacific Ocean. But we can solve the constant, ongoing, endless, perpetual motion machine that Fukushima's breeder reactors now have become. They just consume till the end of time. And everything they consume, they ionize and radiate. It don't matter what that element is. They add an extra... Uh, electrons to that atom with the bombardments of the fissionable products. Full damage not major is what they say at the reactors number five and six, but the emissions from the core and the spent fuel pool are not large. The emissions, just that emission, that there's emissions, means there's damage. And when there's damage, there's high sievers and five sievers you can't get in there. But, I mean, the basement was full of 8,000 tons of water. They took that and sprayed it on the other reactors. Radiated water. So it would be atomized and aerosol. You know that. It turned, it turned into 
atoms and then was released into the environment and came across in North America immediately within a couple of days because the jet streams are actually real. N new 311 footage shows disaster loomed at Fukushima reactor number five because the tsunami was real because that earthquake quake was real because that took out all the infrastructure. And so once you're no water, 90 minutes later, that's 90 million gallons it didn't get, it, it's melting down. And if there's nothing there, the fuel pools will boil off 120,000 liters a day anyway. That's why they got them in the pools because they're so hot. And then the earthquake cracked the pools. That's probably where the water in the basement came from. Number five and six, because that's why they would have sprayed it over because it was hard water, right? And they would have said, okay, well, let's spray it over. It's actually hard water. Maybe it could help. Not because they were like, we're desperate for water because the ocean is right there. Reactor 5 and 6 were not in coal. Shutdown after quake, implies report by U.S. nuclear industry. Cooling at the spent fuel pool number 5 stopped until cables were installed. So that's November 13th. And fresh fuel had been loaded into both reactors. And they never got water because the tsunami and the earthquake took out the entire infrastructure and wrecked that building. And I'll show you more pictures of inside of that building in a minute. Uh, number three, footage show disaster loom. We just covered that, Dana. White smoke from Fukushima Daiichi Reactor 6 turbine building. And so I'll show you pictures out in front of that turbine building for a little bit here. And these pictures, all the pictures I'm showing you are actually out in front of that, where the turbine buildings are out. We'll get some good pictures up here in a second. So that whole site, you can see that whole site is shifted. That whole site is wrecked. That whole site is demolished. That entire site was inundated with imaginable, unimaginable amounts of water and the, the torque of that water and the destruction of that water destroyed everything but the reactors, Dana, and the spent fuel pools, Dana. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm going to go look myself if you don't mind, though. <laughs> and so the ocean is right there. So the first wave you've seen in the video, but there was other waves came right in behind it, right? So the first one fills up the gap, the next one comes over, the next one comes over that, and then 500 miles of the coastline was in updated at hundreds of miles an hour, and it consumed everything, including the nuclear power plants, all of them, on the coastline. That's why you won't see them starting one up on the coastline. You only see them starting on ones up in the land. But look at the damage on that coastline. My goodness. And these were all shot by the Fukushima 50 shortly after. Let's hit some more headlines. White smoke. Major study. Reactor 5 releases may explain why so much radioactive xenon detected. Yeah, and recriticality of one of the uh, reactor's units. But it they never said reactor 6 and 5, rather. And reactor 5 is mentioned again several pages later. And you can find that documentation under my video uh, to the couple of thousand emails at the NRC's uh, website for TEPCO. Uh, okay, let's keep going. So reactor number six now has over six feet of contaminated water. You drink a, a, a Dixie cup, a little tiny cup of that, and you, you will die in years down the road from these cancers. You might die right away, who knows? We've seen numbers of billions per cubic centimeter in the waters. So rather than store it or release it directly into the ocean, they spray it on the reactors, it's atomized in aerosol, comes over to North America, and it kills all the sea life on the coastline of British Columbia, Canada, and the entire Pacific Rim nations. Water in the reactor buildings are causing the cooling systems to fail. Oh, I think you had a little bit few more other problems besides the water in the reactor buildings. Let's see how many of these pictures I got left down there. Let's scoot through some of these pictures so we don't, because we might not get back to this stuff for till I get back next year, you know. Uh, salute the damage. Huh? So everything there was turned into projectiles. Throughout the whole coastline, it was like this. It just grabbed everything and just tossed it. But the reactors are fine throughout the coastline. Dana, no, no. And so the pumps that are down there, that's the pumps over here. They're out front, right? 
And so they were pummeled repeatedly with this stuff washing back and forth. And then the whole coastline had 2,000 square miles of debris on it, scrubbing the coastline. And so that's your pumps anyway, right down on the shoreline. And they pump a million gallons a minute. They pump a million gallons a minute into the reactors to cool them. And the reactors don't get a million gallons a minute. They melt down. Yeah? Yeah. Let's keep going. Um, so you can see this thing was a monster. It came in. The coastline is right there. So the ocean is, the earth was broken. And so all the stuff, that, all the rods that blew all over this site, every time it rains and snows and all the water they spray on the site, and the water liquefaction comes up through that, like in that video I, see, I showed you earlier. Because they have thousands of, of t small earthquakes down there and hundreds of major earthquakes down there all year long. But that's a direct path out to the ocean through all these cracks in the earth, right? Of all the nuclear plants. It's total Armageddon. They don't want to give up nuclear. It's just a handful when you think about it, a few thousand people doing this to this entire planet. The Queen has $17 trillion in uranium stocks. She owns BP. They were calling the shots for Fukushima, for uh, the NRC, for the fire department, for every, you know, everything that they'd done to try to mitigate it was the wrong thing to do. And they were, that was BP, the Queen calling the shots. She owns BP, right? What do you think happened to uh, the Mexico? Guess who done that? That was BP. Guess who owns that? That's the Queen. Carrying out a genocide on the planet against us. She's 99 or something, is she? And Prince Philip wrote in his book, her husband, he's 96 or something, he wrote that in the last chapter that uh, the, the, the King of England, so to speak, right? The Queen's husband. And so he wrote in his autobiography that if, there, if such thing as an afterlife, he wanted to come back as a virus and wipe out 95% of the useless feeders on the planet. That's exactly what they're doing, except they wiped out all the other species on the planet at the same time. And so let me keep an eye on the time, 10.32. We're doing good today. These are, you know, right alongside of the building. These buildings, that's reactor three, I guess. That through... And that's reactor one right there. So that's two over right there. Oh yeah. That's a dangerous spot. So that's the Fukushima 50 went in and took these pictures. So see the radiation rising out. That's radiation. That's enough atoms there to kill everybody on the planet distributed out. What you're looking at. If you're distributed out atom per atom, you can kill every human, every creature on the planet. Remember, you know, a pound of this will kill everybody in the theater, 300 people. Or say 1,500 people. In... Uh, the first minute everybody in the front row is dead and in 20 minutes everybody in the back row is dead and you kill everybody on this planet with a single pound. Atomizing and aerosoling it and releasing it and ingesting it means you're going to get that same dose. And if you don't think that's true, then you might want to go look up Dr. Raymond Gilmany before you snub what I say to you. You go look up his study. Loveless, respiratory. Think about that name, Loveless. Now think about what he done. He killed beagle dogs and beagle puppies for 35 years, and they're still doing it. But, oh, no, you know, it can't hurt you. But why don't anybody ever tell you about those studies? Tumors of the lung, skeleton, and liver occurred beginning at about three years after exposure, and the bone tumors found in 93 dogs, 93, were the most common cause of death. And lung tumors found in 46 dogs was the second most common cause of death. And liver tumors were found in 20 dogs, but we're the cause of death in only two dogs. Now, if you go over, find it won't be too hard to find. I should put the links below, but I really don't have room. If you scroll down a little bit, you can link over all those studies, 94 of them. Read through them yourself. Yeah? Beagle dogs and beagle puppies, and I'm not kidding you either. So what I'm saying to you is very valid. Everything we talk about is extremely well-researched. These pictures, where did you see them last? Huh? Look at this place. This is out in front of Unit 5 and 6. Let's go hit some more headlines in 5 and 6. So, six feet of water in the building. Done deal. Say the building's finished. You get six feet of water into your house. Do you think you can go in there anymore and use that place? No. 
There's a billion creatures in a glass of salt water, 75 to 100 million of them up to phytoplankton. The basis of the food chain, the basis of the oxygen chain, the basis of the carbon sequestering chain. And so they rot and stink up your house. Not only that, the reactors boils a million gallons a minute. So that's 16 million times a billion creatures every minute killed by a reactor. 24 hours a day, 1,440 minutes a day. They're boiling 16 um, million billion creatures. And the eggs and the larvae and the small fries and everything else. And the oxygen. <laughs> uh -huh. Tegro uses radioactive water from 5 and 6 to spray throughout the Fukushima plant. Ocean's right there, dickhead. But I mean, you know, you're in a life and death struggle. You don't even know if your family made it through the tsunami. And you're, you're told to go do something. And then you're at your wit's ends of, how did I get from a medium wage guy with no skills, you know, some inbreed got the job there, now I gotta grab a hose and give my life up. Over 100 tons a day. Number five releases may explain why, we already covered that one. Dana, white smoke, did we cover that? Number five and six were not in cold shutdown after the quake. <laughs> See, that's a really good headline. Implies the report by the U.S. nuclear industry. Calling at the spent fuel pool number five stopped until the cables were installed. And the fresh fuel had been loaded in the boat reactors. I think we did cover that one. But they were not in cold shutdown after the quake. You're getting it now. And so the tsunami ran through there, the earthquake destroyed it, uh, the tsunami ran back out through there, rather. they had detonations all around it, these assemblies were turned into projectiles. No, they're fine, Dana, shut up. Dana, why are you, why are you making such a big deal about it, Dana? Because you kill the Pacific Ocean, now you're killing everything over here on top of that. And a couple of billion people need the Pacific Ocean, besides the rest of the planet. That's 50% of the oxygen on the planet. You already killed all the phytoplankton. The krill are missing, the shrimp are missing, the anchovies are missing, the sardines are missing, the herring are missing. And everything on the shoreline and the tidal pools is missing. We just done 15,000 miles of that coastline. Let me jump over that for a second. You can find it at the nuclear proctologist. And you got sections is the older stuff and the most recent stuff is up in section two. And so today I'll try to get back on that. If not, I'll have to spend all weekend uploading pictures and on five days a week doing these episodes because it's so intensive to do these episodes. But each one of these little ones here, there's a thousand pictures on each of these pages of those areas. Day 16, Northeast, Vancouver Island. And so the whole coastline of Canada is right here for you. It's all sitting right there. And now on, on at the end of that, and on this stuff here, there's 200 pictures on the page. It's a little easier for your... But if you go to over to section one, these pages are... takes a couple of minutes to load up, but then they work perfect. And same thing with this. You just... You click on... You open it up. And when you open up, you get this. You get the GPS as a worm tool. You'll get... Uh, and high-quality pictures. And you just click anything there and open it up. And give it a second. I'll let it clean up. See that? And then left or right of the picture, you can scroll ahead or scroll back high or low, click left or right, don't matter, or just stay on that arrow. But you can you can come through, you can see there's nothing on, on the rocks. And what is there, we documented it, and that we know that there's a minimum of 5,600 species supposed to be there. 600 algae, 480 species of worms, 70 species of sponges, 78 species of sea anemones, 76 species of starfish, and blah, 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 you know, and they're all missing. We, we've spent 260 days out of 365 days. Uh, and at the bottom of it is a couple of hundred headlines, pertinent, important, uh, desperate headlines that you need to have and be able to share with your loved ones and talk about. And Canada busted covering up. So I usually have a beep one there for everybody to see there's something going on. And then you can click it and come over and start learning. What could be better than that? All of the stricken reactors and the spent fuel pools contain plutonium. You conspiracy theorists, you. Okay. Radioactivity substances from Fukushima belong to landowners, not us. What? As November tests showed massive contamination far outside the evacuation zone. I got no real idea what that headline is. Is that the right one? I must have slipped that in there accidentally. People eating more radiation but not in danger. 
Oh, it's like a banana. It's like a potato chip. It's like walking in the sunshine, like getting on an airplane. It's like sleeping next to somebody. It's like uh, the stuff that's in your water. It's like potassium-40, right? Over and over till the end of time. There's a thousand more percent more radiation in the ocean than there is from Fukushima. So what are you worried about? Why are you making a big fuss about it? I mean, that's our top speakers. Here's Jay Cullen on CBC. In 2013, at the very end of that year, still telling people there's no such thing as a melted reactor. But if there was, and besides that, he starts off with, there's a thousand times more natural radiation. I don't know what the big fuss is about. Everything on the planet is acclimated to natural radiation. Nothing on the planet is acclimated or can deal with man-made radiation. That's the problem. That's why you have terrorist laws. That's why you have nuclear waste holding sites, blah, 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 blah. Here's the video. Have a nice moment. The, the levels of radioactivity that are actually being measured um, are a factor of a, of, of a thousand below the concentrations and the activity uh, of those naturally uh, occurring radioactive elements. And have there been any other nuclear uh, meltdowns nearer the ocean that might provide some useful information on how radioactive materials, uh, you know, travel or what have you in, in, in oceans? Well, I, I'm not aware of any meltdowns uh, uh, right next to oceans. Uh, we um, The only sort of point of comparison that we have is, is uh, Chernobyl in 1986. Um, if something similar were to happen uh, on the coast of Japan, it would be a very serious um, situation to find ourselves in. And the, the levels of radioactivity that are actually... And Chernobyl was one-third the size of any of the reactors in Japan. Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown. Chernobyl stopped after 10 days. Chernobyl... It was equal to 400 Hiroshima bombs. Well, I wonder what Fukushima is equal to. Do just those numbers alone, multiply it by three 100% meltdowns. Not counting the fuel pulls, fuel pulls that we've covered and we will continue to cover more of that. At the meantime, we need to lay out an, a roadmap of what happened for everybody so there's no, everybody's on the same page. So everybody says, okay, well, you're not telling the truth because I got the headlines now and I know that that's not true. So let's talk about the real stuff so we can have a debate. That's all I'm saying, among a few other things. 96% of Fukushima residents ingested cesium. You know, do you get that? Do you understand what they're saying to you? That a single atom, like I've showed you yesterday, the headlines for that, and the doctors who who done studies and show that, a single atom will give you a cancer. But see, cancer... Is like Lauren, Lauren Moret says, cancer is the mouse in the room. There's 1,800 autoimmune deficiencies. There's diabetes and Alzheimer's and dementia and cardiovascular problems. There's heart attacks. There's diabetes. There's all kinds of these issues. Autism passed on to your children through the genetic, you know, like the radiations in your body is pumping radiation every second in your body. Wow. And every day you get a little bit more, and now it's more pumping in your body. Next day you got more, and now it's more pumping in your body. Wrecking your DNA, wrecking your chromosome, filling your body up with white blood cells, displacing the oxygen molecules for a couple of decades because it has to build a tumor around it. It's a sarcophagus around it. We call it a tumor, right? But in the meantime, all these autoimmune deficiencies show up because you're flooding your body with white blood cells and displacing the oxygen molecules. Because the white blood cells have to attack it all the time because it wrecks the white blood cells. It just pops them like popcorn. Japanese government officials evacuated out to 60 kilometers after the reactor's explosion. Told the public 20 kilometers is fine. Then they brought in every homeless for a thousand miles and every immigrant that showed up after that don't speak English or speak japanese <laughs> Fukushima unprecedented in scope beyond, utterly beyond human control and a raging fire in the spent fuel pond it claims only partial meltdowns so the fuel ponds are reactors and they melt down you can put them away for 20 years you get the wrong event they can melt down into a chain reaction like the reactor in your like the reactor core the rods in your reactor can melt down during an event like Fukushima no different that's the problem about this stuff. There's nowhere to put it. You can't put it together because you can never get back in there if something goes wrong. It's like every, and a pound of it can kill everything on the planet, used, you know, maniacally. Let's keep going. Reactor number five had inadequate quake protection. Well, I mean, nothing can survive 
this creature that came through. There's nothing we can build to sustain it. This is where they ran that hose down there for salt water. And so the salt water, like every minute you're spraying this salt water on the reactors, you're creating these sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyballs. This is like Chernobyl's every few minutes going into the environment because that's atomized and aerosol on the cores. And you have to do that till the end of time and now they're using fresh water. But does that make it any worse, any better? No. It still happened to us. It's, it's endless now and we won't try to fix it. We won't have a talk about it. All we claim is like a banana or a potato chip. I can't do that anymore. I can't stand that anymore. I can't read that one more time. And when I do, I snap every single time. There's nothing I can do about that. Because that's wrong to do that. If I'd done that, I would understand everybody on the planet demonize me and attacking me. But if they do it, everybody puts them up on a pedestal. And nobody dare to, with a counter-argument. It's vicious. It's vicious. You can't t trust any media. It's vicious. There's not a journalist out there I can trust. They're vicious. They got to always interject the nuclear apologist. You can't have a conversation with these people. They're not lucid. They don't talk about real stuff. They talk about this fable, this fantasy. Let's jump over to some other pictures before we run out of time here because time is flying. And we got 15 minutes left to go. And I haven't even scratched it. Get your ass in gear, Mr. D. So that's up in front of number six. Hey, buddy. You liking your job today? No. Are you still alive? Probably not. Are you getting a fatal dose? Most likely. Are you part of the Fukushima 50? Definitely. Does anybody know who you are? No. Did they hide your identity? Yes. How come? Because they knew that your gravestone would be the last word anybody ever got from you shortly after. So that's out in front of number six. Oh, look at a little, little barrel, a little bit of garbage. Ah, oh, now we're getting into the nuts and grinds of it. But you know what I mean. That's the pumping stations, dear. And so number six. You can see the cement and the rocks and the dirt and the rust now and everything else. Everything torn apart and destroyed out in front of these pump houses. They were getting no more water. The whole pipeline was picked up and snapped apart all the way into the buildings anyway. Um, and that's... As the Fukushima 50s, these pictures are distorted from radiation because they're terrified because they know their life is now over because they're going in just trying to document it and the cameras are covered with plastic bags to keep the radiation off it so the people outside won't get deadly doses when they get those pictures and to protect the camera so they can get through the job and make it out the other side. Hopefully they don't encounter a rod because if they do, they're dead men walking right there in that spot and in two weeks they're dead. They run past a, a rod, two weeks later, they're dead people. That's how that works. So the whole straight site, straight, site was wrecked, permanently wrecked. And, you know, the infrastructure was ripped to pieces. You can see the whole bank is torn apart there. That's the pump house, though, right there. And then that whole bank was shattered, like those earthquake pictures that we've been looking at. We'll probably see a bit more of it. And it's just important that everybody understands what's going on here. Now, in a similar spot like this in California, two years ago, they found over three and a half million dead fish in front of one of these pumping stations. That's what it kills every year, three and a half million fish. It's pumping a million gallons for each reactor. Six million gallons a minute when all the reactors are running. And so it doesn't take, like these pumps can get filled up with seaweed. What do you think chunks of wood is going to do to it? But what do you think a tsunami coming along the coastline and just in updating everything? And so this is number five pumping stations. It's right alongside of number six. And whoever that is, they're not alive no more. Does that is that stuff up there? Is that is just looking up high. Look, you can see everything is rattled and bent over up here, even right up high. Well, it came right over all of that, right? It went all the way up, went through the buildings, and like I'll show you the pictures. 
of how high up this thing actually went. Let me show you that picture again so you can actually appreciate when that tsunami came through. That's inside the plant you're looking at alongside of me, right? You can see those tanks. That, that's where Buddy's down there. He's just above those tanks. The pumping station is below that. And you can see the tank up in the top corner up here is underwater, right? And so that picture I'm showing you of these guys up by the tanks, uh, all of this was underneath, you know, heavy salt water, uh, and it went way up higher than all of this. So he's out in front of number five. You can see the damage, all the stuff packed away in there, right? It looks like they were trying to avoid getting too much damage in the pictures, but it was impossible not to, sometimes, obviously. Who knows, for sure. These are shocking pictures of five and six. So the damage was complete, right? And you can see everything is piled up way up high, right? Kind of, in that picture anyway, way up above them. There's a good picture of the tanks, the wharfing area, and we showed that earlier. It's a different angle. That's in front of the pump house of number six. All of these were damaged and destroyed beyond repair. There's radiation everywhere. If they did manage to fix it, nobody knows how. You can't get into buildings to fix them. And then everything they showed us and everything they told us in the media is an outright outrageous lie. Look at that metal all twisted up. Uh, and so we're through all of that. Okay, we went through all of that. Let's come back to those headlines. Let's bang into a couple of more different headlines. Large amount of seawater found in reactor number five at the Hamaoka nuclear plant. And they're trying to stop the reactors from re eroding. That was uh, May the 16th, 2011. That's a different reactor. So the whole coastline was inundated by water. The, all these power plants around the ocean, they need millions of gallons a minute. And the ones that are up in the mountains, they're boiling all your fresh water. A million gallons a minute of fresh water is sterilizing it, killing all the, all the bacteria and all the insects and all the little creatures into it and killing the oxygen of the water. Then they're flowing down river and people are drinking that. There's nothing good about a nuclear power plant. There's zero. Everything about it, they got to lie about it all the time. Coalition requests U.S. intervention. U.N. intervention to stabilize spent fuel pool number four at Fukushima endorsed by nuclear experts. Well, we got to go in there and fix that. Let me show a couple of modifications that I made in Unit 4 this morning. This is what they say. This is what they're saying it looks like on the inside, but that's what it looks like on the outside. And so, the, so if you re, if you think about it, um, it's no exaggeration, exaggeration to say that the fate of Japan and the whole world depends on reactor number four. But look at it. Reactor four is completely destroyed. And what they show you, the official picture of the fuel pool, is impossible. How can it be inside of this thing right here? Then again, the Wall Street Journal, NRC transcript, explosion level destruction for Unit 4. Do you think that's not leveled? Huh? You think that's not leveled? Let me get out of the way. You're going to tell me that's not leveled? And so why... Did all the experts say, oh, yeah, yeah no, uh, that's a good idea. Nudge, nudge, wait, wait, right. Can't take them anywhere. Can't give them anything. And then they store it all in bags and bring it into other prefectures and set it on fire. And then it shows up in North America three or four days later because the jet streams are real. The Trans-Pacific air pollution is real. Don't take my word for it. Go check Elsewhere Springer and Wiley and the rest of the bootlick and cheerleading lapdogs. So dust can come over from Asia, but not Fukushima's atoms that are 10,000 times smaller than the dust. Okay. Like these atoms are in one millionth, or they're one ten thousandth of a millionth of a meter. So if you got a millionth of a meter, a millionth of a meter, it's one ten thousandth 
the size of that. And a millionth of a meter. You know what a meter is like, right? 100 centimeters, 30. Blah, blah, blah. I know. Well, I almost clicked it. Let's keep going. We only got a few minutes left. Five minutes. Do, do, do. Got to get in second gear here. So former ambassador number four at the top national security issue for the entire world. Get lost, doofus. Uh, but anyway, back to number four and five because number four has obviously disappeared immediately. The emails are below. The pictures are below. You can go look at it yourself. The documentation we done yesterday. Let's keep going to number five. Inadequate quake protection. It doesn't matter what it was. You couldn't survive a nine earthquake anyway. It had to get some damage. And when it comes to nuclear power plant, any damage is a nightmare. Nothing can go wrong. As long as nothing can go wrong, it's still a nightmare. Still boiling a million gallons of eggs and larvae and small fries and phytoplankton and the bases of the food chain and everything else every minute. There's nothing good about it, see? So temperature doubles as spent fuel pool number three, up 70% at number six. This was February 6, 2012. So this is another way of shaking down the government. I gotta give us some money because we got big problems. Okay, well, gee, we don't want another meltdown. But there was nothing going on there because it all atomized and aerosol is my guess. So five and six stayed intact, but so did number two, right? Number two stayed intact, Dana. Hang on a second. So number two stayed intact. And no, but there's no fuel in number two. That's last week. They come out a week and a half ago, right? Number five over here. Number two got nothing in it. But that building was intact, right? And experts conclude September 26, 2015. Experts conclude no nuclear fuel left inside the reactors. And they're showing fuel on number five, I know. Can you believe anything they say? They just use that to try to... to okay, we'll admit the number two and we'll fool them on number five. Everything else they told us is a lie. We had to flush it all out. And so here's another good one for you. I had 30 videos knocked down. These are the emails of the videos. And so hi there, Dana. Will the real Japanese people please stand up? It was taken down one hour. Should Oxford University students talk by Wade Allison get recertified? Part two, taken down. Uh, proof nuclear scientists like Dr. Kevin Kemp are human trash. Taken down. Fukushima Voodoo, Dr. Brian Hanley, world's most disingenuous nuclear quack. Taken down. Japan is broken. Taken down. These were good videos too. It's time to evacuate Japan and bring them over to Chernobyl. It's not nowhere near as bad in Chernobyl as it is in Japan. Take everybody out of Japan and bring them to Chernobyl. They're still better off by tens of thousands a Beckwell's per minute, no matter where they're to, they're better off. But I'm just saying, like, I'm under attack all the time. Nuclear PR firms are the evilest people on the earth, speaking of which. And Fukushima proves pro-nuclear advocates mentally unstable. Because they tell you it's like a banana potato, you have a walk in the sunshine, gone. You don't want Dana out there telling you that stuff. That's why we're doing episodes, so you can find it all. Fukushima, why does Woods Holds claim 137 turns into potassium 40 in bananas? These are questions people needed to ask, but they are, they are now taken down. We don't get to ask those questions no more. And what we do, what I'm doing, and what I've done with the help of the hounds of Fukushima is remarkable. As we pull the wool right out from underneath them, uh, here's inside a number five. And so showing a, 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 a foot and a few inches, foot and an inch maybe, or who knows. Now this is, we don't know if this is real, but this is what they claim. And so this building, even if this is all it is, with salt water through the building, the building's destroyed by now. Go down and wash your car with salt water. Come back and tell me in two weeks it was fine, Dana. Leave your car in salt water for a couple of weeks and then come back and tell me it was fine. Leave it there for six, six months or something to come back and tell me it's fine. And so this is bad, bad, bad. That's the Fukushima 50 going through this building. They got big garter counters and they were running the other direction. Lots of them died right away. Lots of them got sick. And But these are extraordinary pictures to get our hands on. Now I'm not saying Japan didn't come out and protest. And they did. And they do. And they continue to. But 
they live in what they consider a democracy, and so they hope that protesting, you know, will win them. And so they did. They, they shut down all the reactors in Japan, blah, blah, blah. But, I mean, at the time, the whole country was still reeling, right? Meet the Fukushima 50? No, you can't, because they got lots to hide, and they probably did. And so let's come back and finish it out on a couple of headlines. And I guess time's up, is it? We hit it right on the nose, 10 minutes. Unit 5, Unit 6. We've just done that one. Let me get another two or three headlines in before I call it. That's okay, can I always get it tomorrow. Nuclear radiation, most carcinogenic thing that exists. A single atom will give you a cancer. Autoimmune deficiencies will show up before the cancers. Cancers could take 30 years to show up. The autoimmune deficiencies don't. All the reactor buildings were destroyed. All of them were in the heart attack mode. And just I'm going to play one final clip, and then I'll come over and say hi to everybody. After this clip, the show is over. And I'll have a, we'll do a uh, say hi to everybody anyway. So here's, uh, here is David Suzuki one more time, talking about Unit 4. And just because we have to cover it tonight, I want to play that clip to show you how deep the cover-up went and that these people are way too educated to fall for that. So why did they try to get us to do that, to fall for it, I wonder? That the fear is, if there's another earthquake of a seven or above, that that building will go and then all hell breaks loose. And the probability of a seven or above earthquake in the next three years is over 95%. I have seen a paper which says that if, in fact, the fourth plant goes under an earthquake and those rods are exposed, it's bye-bye Japan and everybody on the west coast of North. Okay. Um, it's what they call democracy. Nev Killer, Miss Frill. So there's a, yeah, the radio show from Friday's up at Rince. Miss, uh, I know Miss Milky got that one up there too, I think. I, I haven't got a chance to check. I wanted to hear the first part of it because I didn't hear it. I was working on this. Alex, thank you. Fans filtration, thank you. Alex, Kevin, you're welcome. Bob, thank you. Thomas, Suzuki's on the winning team, yeah. Hi, Laurie, and Chucker. So we got a thumbs down troll lurking. First two episodes, Miss Milky, thank you, Jan. Yeah, I'm getting lucky so far, and but I'm getting my momentum back, ain't I? Candace, Bob, and thank you, Jan, by the way. And you don't have to and nobody has to ask permission to re-upload my stuff, by the way, folks. It's always common unless they YouTube messes with me, but let me know and I'll go get it and get try to get it back up. Help Kippy, Kippy, no and no. Uh thank you, Kitty. Veronica, yeah, no kidding. Cotton, thanks, bud. CB, Tree Wolf, Terry Ann. Yeah, the live shows. How's this working out for everybody in the daytime? If you're not going to ask me questions, maybe I'll ask you guys questions. How's this working out for us in the daytime, 10 a.m. slot? Hi, Kate. Thank you, Kate. And Kate's got the Fukushima Hounds. You'll find all kinds of links below. You'll find Thomas. You'll find Miss Milky. Kevin Blanche, that I never mentioned enough. Is down below. All kinds of people. Lori's down below. Uh, Missing Skies links are down below. There's many other sources besides me. I don't. I prop. I put out everybody that's trying that I can find. Uh, and Nick, Navtel, your eye colors, Chucker, Ellie, Atom, Brian. Woo! We're on a streamer that time. I probably missed a dozen people because it's scrolling. There has to be a thousand or more comments today, and Google will erase all of those before <laughs> the video shows back up. I am recording it over here and the comments just for the future. And so, so it's good. This time is good. Okay. Good stuff, folks. Seems like everybody's liking it. And good momentum. Yeah, no, I agree, Adam. And I'm just flashing through all the comments here at the same time. You know, I'll impart with you once again. Now, I never checked to see if I raised any money yesterday. And we're starting to raise money again. And we got to get a $12,000 TriCaster so I can do interviews and I can have multiple people. 
and that we have the ability to do a proper documentary and that for every aspect of what we're doing in the future, this is the most important thing we're going to do. And it's a stupid amount of work and money to do something like this. The TriCaster is 10000 but you need a camera and you need the, the proper cords and you need the proper microphones. And you're looking at over 12000 minimum if you're lucky. Um, but what it does is that it, it's going to open up the whole world to us. And it can live stream to three different platforms at the same time. How cool is that one? And, you know, it does everything else on top of that. But it's just as good as anything Fox or CNN or MSNBC is going to use. So it's the real deal. And so then it takes the audio and automatically, if you call me on a phone, and we'll be doing that through that, I'll be able to import the phone right in. But I'll also be able to take the take your audio, run it through the Adobe in real time. And so as you're talking to me on a little squeaky phone, we can tweak your audio until it sounds like you're like just incredible right there in front of you. Very cool stuff. And so everybody can be heard in that whole context of what they're saying and the very nuances of what they're saying uh, is just going to be incredible. It's to Think of it as like a 6K television where it's just incredible sound. We need that for all that, those interviews. And so we can't afford to really go out and buy all of this stuff individually and just we need a big building and everything else. But the TriCaster does all that. It's meant to democratize video making. You know, it's a $6,000 computer for starters. And then it has all the other. And so I've been at this for a couple of years looking at it. You know, but now I realize we're going to have, if I want to continue, we have to raise enough money to do that. And you can donate below the video. You'll see links below. Uh, Dana Dern for that. Uh, Hotmail.com. Uh, through PayPal. You type in that email address and you'll can donate directly to that and my site you'll find a donate button for credit cards and so slowly but surely I'm going to start to push that over the next week or two and we haven't raised any I don't know if we raised any yesterday but we haven't raised any so far towards it and but I'm not really but I, I am setting that stage that we're going to have to do this for the near future we we funded the Fukushima expedition for life and everything you're seeing coming up in this video we got a tow truck to tow us down from the top of the Charlottes to the lower end of Charlottes because it was just too rough for me to get around that coastline during a five-month trip on the coastline we funded. And we got that documentation is mostly already up at the nuclear proctologist. And we've done another expedition since then. But I just want to show that in context of everybody what we are and who we are and what we've done. So what you're going to see is the boat on the trailer. And then you'll see the boat cruising along the coastline. But that image is all crowdfunded. Everything you're seeing here, everything in that picture, everything. So I kind of went off into that one. And home goddess is dear answers ain't gesture. And I'm just saying hi and goodbye to everybody as we, we uh, as we slow it down. Hey buddy. I'm just finishing the show. That's Simon folks. Anybody's wondering. Good morning, and then, I, yeah, it's still morning, and so it's, uh, I was going to head, what are you doing, you're going to be home? Okay, well, I'll be, I'll leave and head over in about a half an hour, how about that? Okay, we love you, we'll see you in a bit, buddy, yeah, okay, bye, bye, yeah, bye, bye. And so, got to answer, when your kid phones, you got to answer, that's all you can do, right? Atmospheric environment, so... Like, think about that the jet streams are real. I know, I know, Dana. Come on, Dana. Really, Dana? Okay, well, how about this one? Trans-Pacific pollution and mineral dust. So big dust particles come all the way over and add to your pollution index. And so these reactors are hemorrhaging into the environment, not just the ocean. And so that a gram of it produces more atoms than every grain of sand on every beach on the planet. That's an invisible snowstorm. You can't see it or hear it or taste it or touch it or pick it up or throw rocks at it. <clears throat> okay, so we'll take care, folks. Question for Dana. 
Good luck, Alex. What are your spe uh, speculations and or forecasts for cash regarding the effects of Fukushima on the Southern Hemisphere, Australia, New Zealand, and Antarctica? It was carried and mixed throughout the air columns within one year. Right, and so that's why you see the same kind of readings throughout the countries. And that's why you see when, when the radiation readings go up, they go up throughout the whole country because it's mixed throughout the air columns itself. And we've seen 1,500 uh, sustained atoms per cubic meter of air throughout North America, but that migrated right through all the other continents and because land mass is a spot for it. And now it's picked up through your oceans and brought into your continents all the time and redistributed. And then it's, it's bringing up in your vegetation and your trees and your communities and everything else. And so the whole planet is contaminated. But you can tell by going down and looking at the insect population, the bird population, the marine population, particularly the tidal zones. And the reason the tidal zones are affected so heavily is because everything that hits the mountaintops releases their payloads from the clouds that runs back down. So on the in Canada, say, the, the, the Rocky Mountains, everything on the west side comes towards the uh, Pacific and everything on the east side of the Rocky Mountains go towards the Atlantic coastlines and the Gulf. But we do know that the plumes are were, are still coming out of there, are still dramatic, are still uh, extremely significant, and will be till the end of time. Just a small release from this is, is significant for the entire planet. And it's just endless. And so we got to you know, get our courage and, and, and our will, and it's our will against them, and there's more of us. And we have to make that very clear that that we need to, to we need to send in every nuclear scientist on the planet into Fukushima, and we don't want them back. They can stay there for all we care, but they're going to fix this. And then they can stay there till the end of time, till they rot. We don't care. You send them all in there and leave them there. Let them fix it or let them die, one or the other. And I I couldn't care less about these people. I have no no remorse for these people whatsoever. They know what they're doing. They got the education. They told you it was like a banana. And they know better. And they've done that for 70 years. And they're the ones that put us in this predicament. They're the problem. They're, and the solution is get rid of that problem. You're not part of the solution. You're part of the problem. If you're pro-nuclear, and you, the only way you can be pro-nuclear is to lie. You have to lie about everything about nuclear to be pro-nuclear to everyone around you. And so it's just a really twisted world we live in. But your countries might be better off Australia is bad, I know that. New Zealand's still bad too, we know that. And mass die-offs of the birds, but these oceans are interconnected, so they're all going to fall. Everything's going to fall, and not won't be very far down the road. And that's documented now on the Canadian coastline, and I already talked about that earlier. I'm just going to bring up, bring up my website one more time for everybody. And just the, the enormity of what I'm saying to you, now if you come over to my website, and this is section one. In section one, there's little pages here to get you up. Fall out from the jet streams is that section there. Chernobyl, so you can get a handle on the comparisons. It don't mean it's all there, but it gives you a better idea. You can take your time and read through it. Um, can't remember what's in that one. And so jet streams in this one too. Pacific Ocean in that one. Japan's radioactive fallout throughout Japan in that one. Um, these are pictures like you were looking at earlier. These are 2,200 pictures right here. So it might take a while for some of these pages to load up because there's so much on it. But once it loads up, you're fine. Let that page load up for two minutes if that's what it takes. Just leave it alone. And then you can click on any picture. But you have to right-click and open. Each of these is about 1,000 pictures once you get into the picture section. Once again, you got Canadian Fukushima radioactive fallout right here. You got the melted fuel ejected. You can learn all about that right there. You got Fukushima nuclear fallout. You can learn about Australia, New Zealand right here in just a matter of 20 minutes or half an hour. Open up that link and you'll find that in the sections at the top of any of my pages. And this is the original page you're going to come to. If you go there today, you'll get this page. Go to sections, open up that, and you'll get that page. Scroll down a little few and you'll find these. These are jet streams. And ocean currents are all right there. California, you want to see how bad California really got hit? Go read through that. If you want to see any kind of structures and units and pages and, and accidents worldwide is right here. So there's an enormous amount. But once you get down below in that, then you get into what we've done. 
and that was the Fukushima expedition for life. And look at that starfish right there. You tell me there's nothing wrong with that. That's a starfish with another starfish growing out of it, and another starfish growing out of that one. Mutations. And that's one of the few starfish you find on the entire coastline. And each of these pages down here are a thousand pictures showing you that entire coastline of Canada. I don't know what else I could do for people. And I don't know what else... I shouldn't say I could do for people. I should say that Dana and the Hounds of Fukushima and the people that supported us can do for you. We've done everything we could do for you. Beyond anything imaginable that anybody else will probably ever do for you. And I'll continue to do it for you. Uh, wholeheartedly and it's my, it's my honor to, to be the one that goes to battle and takes the beating and takes the assaults and takes the ridicule and takes the humiliation and bounces it off my shoulders and comes back stronger for it every time and that's who I am that's who you get every time you can't beat me down with lies and, and, and uh, you know telling me it's like a banana using that rhetoric it doesn't work against me I'm immune to it, and so are you. If you pay attention to any of these episodes, you too can be immune. Okay, folks, take care. Take care, Miss Milky, Terry Ann, Patrick, Sylvia, Amters, Never Killer, Rick Robinson, Mickey. Thanks, folks. Once again, can't do it without you. I need your support, and over the next week, I'll start pushing a little harder if I got to. And, you know, I'll just gently push along the way all the time, because otherwise we're never going to get there. And the only way we got all this done and pulled it all off and got back home is now uploading it and is now sitting here doing this every day is because we just went ahead and done it. And that's what we're going to do here too. We're going to get that TriCaster at some point in the near future and then we're going to do interviews all day every day. You know, five alarm clocks so I never sleep in and miss an interview. It'll never happen to me. Hugs for everybody. Take care, folks. <laughs>